Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing a tour of my home office slash sewing room. So that is this room that I'm sitting in right now and this isn't anything that you haven't really seen before because I have been working and filming out of this room since we moved into this home in November. So you've seen little bits and pieces here and there but today's video is going to be like the official tour. Um, so I'm going to show you everything from how I have all of my supplies organized and how everything is set up. And I've been really excited to film this video and the only reason why it's taken me so long is that it's just taken me some time to get this room set up to the point where I felt like it was complete enough to share. And it's still not perfect, there's still a few things that I would like to do to it and a little bit of work that needs to be done. But for the most part it's pretty much there and so I'm really excited to share it with you and I hope that this video gives you some great tips and inspiration for your own spaces as well. So let's jump right into it! So I thought that we could start over here, which is at my sewing desk. And the first thing that I want to show you actually is my new sewing chair. So this is the ergonomic chair from Branch Furniture and I'm actually working with them on today's video. So this was very kindly sent to me for the purposes of doing a review in this video. And like I said, this is their ergonomic chair and I have this in the white frame with the gray seat. And this has just made such a huge difference to my sewing room <laughs> as a whole, um, mainly because I no longer have to drag my computer desk chair across the room around the cutting table and over to my sewing desk <laughs> every time I wanna sew and then back again every time I have to go do some work on the computer or edit a video or something. So already that's a huge upgrade for this room, but also just the fact that this chair is so comfortable and it's also very supportive so I really feel like I'm able to maintain a good posture when I'm sitting at my sewing desk and you know working for a couple hours also because this is an ergonomic chair it's fully adjustable so you can change the position of pretty much everything on the chair to suit your body and what feels best for you um, I personally really like this little adjustable lumbar support on the back here. I just really feel like this gives me the most support in my back and really helps me keep a good posture while I'm working. It was also really easy to assemble, so I'll insert some clips of me putting it together. Um, but basically I would say it took me maybe about 20 to 30 minutes on my own to assemble. It came with some online instructions, so you just have to scan a QR code and then you're able to access all of the instructions and I found them really clear, easy to follow. They all have um, illustrations that come with them as well. And I didn't need any like special tools or anything to put it together. Um, they sent me everything that I needed in order to assemble it. And I just feel like the quality of this chair is really high. It feels very sturdy and well-made. And I also love how it looks. Um, and they have some other color options as well. So you can choose um, between a couple different frame options and a couple different seat options. So you could get the color combination that suits your space the best. And I really love how this one works in here. Um, I love the gray tone. The colors in this room are like a light grayish, I would say, and there's a lot of white accents as well. So I feel like the aesthetic and overall just look of this chair really suits my space. So yeah, I'm really happy with this chair. Um, thank you so much, Branch, for working with me on this video. They've also kindly given me a discount code to share with you, so I'll place that on the screen somewhere and also in the description box below. So you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. So this is how my overall sewing desk and workspace looks. Um, the desk itself is from Ikea, so it's a um, flat desktop and then two drawers, and I believe that those are Alex drawers. Um, I can't exactly remember all the name of the pieces, um, so I will be linking everything in the description box below in case you'd like to try and find it or something similar. Leg in the middle there that's just adding some support in the middle just because my machines are the heaviest part. Um, so it just needs that little bit of extra support there. And I'm really happy with this desk. The only thing is that it's actually not um, fixed to these drawers. So the only thing that's kind of holding it on are these little um, like round plastic circles. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but they're on top of um, these drawers and then they kind of hold the desktop in place. 
but it doesn't do the best job unfortunately because when I am sewing my machines obviously are running um, and kind of shaking the desk and so the desktop does tend to move a little bit. Um, so I'm thinking we might need to try and find a solution to that, either um, fixing these to the drawers more permanently or something like that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, this desk is really big. It's a huge workspace. I'm able to fit all of my machines comfortably and work here. So um, this is a really huge upgrade for me coming from working at our kitchen island in our old tiny apartment. And I'm super grateful to have this space. So starting over here, this is my little thread stand. Um, my mom got this for me as a Christmas present last year and it's just really cute. It's like a little wooden stand that folds out with little legs. It's a little bit crooked. There we go. Um, so yeah, I just have all of my little threads on display there. Here I have my serger. It's all set up, threaded, ready to go. Um, this serger was also my mom's as well, but she kindly gave it to me um, as she wasn't really using it and it's literally the best thing. <laughs> it's just such a luxury. I've always said that about this serger. It's not a machine that you need, um, but if you do manage to get your hands on one or, you know, decide that it's time to invest in one, I do think it's a really good investment. It just adds such a professional finish to all of my garments um, and it's just a joy to sew with. Um, so yes, absolutely love this machine and would highly recommend um, this brand as well if it's in your budget. Um, it is an expensive machine, but the nicest thing about this is that it has the air threading. So um, I think the biggest drawback of a lot of sergers is that you have to thread the machine yourself and it's quite difficult. This one um, with the two, like the upper and lower looper threads, you literally just feed them into kind of a little tube and push down a lever and it just uses air to push the thread through and completely threads your machine for you so you really don't have to do anything you just have to thread the upper needle um, which is just like a regular sewing machine and then these are my sewing machines so you'll recognize both of these they've been featured heavily in my videos this is my old vintage singer which was my mom's machine it's probably older than I am or about as old as I am at this point um, and the reason why I now have this one is because this one um, broke and we had to fix it but it was also in the middle of while I was filming um, a video with the deadline so um, in the meantime I wasn't sure if it was going to be revived and brought back to life so I did purchase this one um, as a kind of backup machine and I'm actually really happy with this one. This is the one that I actually use more on a day-to-day -day basis just because it has some quality of life upgrades over this machine. Um, and this is also the machine that I recommend you buy if you're looking to get into sewing. Um, it's a very affordable machine. It has all of the features that you need, plus like extras if you do wanna move on from kind of the basics. I use this machine for everything and it has everything that I need on it. And yeah, I'm super happy with how it works. Then moving up here, this is my pegboard. Um, so this is just some additional storage and also I think looks really cute in this room. This pegboard is from Ikea, um, so I've just got my craft scissors there. So those are the scissors that I use to cut paper and everything else. Um, just some like pens and marking tools that I use um, for patterns. I've got my tape, which I use to assemble patterns and also a pencil sharpener, um, very important. Um, up here I have all of my serger threads. So these are just on like little Ikea hooks. So these are kind of like the longer hooks. And I don't think <clears throat> that's what these are meant for at all. I think these hooks are meant to kind of have something going across them, if that makes sense. But they work really well for these kind of cone threads. Um, <laughs> so that's how I have everything stored there. And it just pleases me how it looks. <laughs> it's very aesthetic, I think. Um, but it's also very practical storage. And then here I have all of my cutting tools. So I have a rotary cutter. I've got some older pairs of scissors, which I don't really use anymore, but I mean, they can just be on display here. And it's always good to have a backup. Um, these are the scissors, which I use most often. These were also a gift. Um, and these are the Kai 7250. These are an expensive pair of scissors, but they are the best scissors I have ever used. And now that I've used them, um, when I try going back to my older scissors, which are these ones here, there's like no comparison. Um, they have a really like soft grip here, so it's really comfortable to use if you're cutting stuff out for like a long period of time. 
um, and they just cut through everything like butter like it just feels so smooth so I would highly recommend those scissors definitely um, I did recently <laughs> have a, a little bit of an issue with them where I was trying to cut through a quite bulky seam which I had forgotten I had actually pinned and my scissors weren't cutting through and I didn't realize so I just kept kind of pressing harder because you know these scissors cut through everything and I knew that it should be cutting through the seam and I was trying to cut through a pin and I absolutely um, like nicked the inside of the scissors and caused a huge lump and, and kind of ruined them so um, I was pretty distraught <laughs> because they are an expensive pair of scissors and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get them fixed um, so I did just bring them in to have them sharpened and they actually came back perfect and work like new so I'm very happy about that. And then I do have this pair of scissors from LDH scissors as well and this is their Midnight Black edition and this is the um, 10, I guess it's 10 inches I think um, is how long they are. And I bought these just to kind of have a backup and also because I was interested in trying these scissors. I've seen a lot of people use them and really like them and they're about half the price of these ones. I also bought these ones in their second sale. So on their website they have a section where they sell items that kind of came from the factory and weren't satisfactory for full price sale. They have maybe like a small defect on them but it doesn't impact how the scissors work at all. Yeah I actually can't tell what is wrong with these ones. I did actually get a pair of their thread snips as well um, so that I can keep these by my machine instead of having to constantly pull my scissors around with me. And I can actually see on these ones that the label was slightly misprinted, so that's why they were on sale. But I mean, it doesn't change the functionality or you know, how well these work, and it's a discounted price. So I was pretty happy with that, and I finally have some thread snips to keep by my machine. Um, over here, this is just a little like wooden storage box, which is also from Ikea. And I just keep some notions in here, so this is my little um, like button collection. I've got some like jeans buttons and then like a bunch of little thrifted packages of buttons. I pretty much get all of my buttons at the thrift store um, except for like specialty ones like jeans buttons. Um, I think those are like ribbons and some like twill tape, just random stuff. Over here I have a lot of like thrifted bias tapes which I actually haven't had to use yet but it's always good to have some of these um, in case you run out of enough fabric to make some bias tapes so um, yeah, and they're kind of cute, like they come in a bunch of different colors so I could do like a contrasting um, bias binding. And then I've got my elastics. Um, I'm actually kind of running low on elastic and probably need to pick up some more uh, because I make so many pairs of elastic waistbands. <laughs> and then over here it's a little hard to get into these drawers so I just usually move this machine if I need to get in. Um, but I have some zippers, a lot of these are thrifted as well. Um, and then this is kind of like a larger drawer. Um, that just has um, some bigger zippers and things that didn't fit in the top drawers. So I don't really have a like great place for this because this machine is here. I guess if I'm not really using this machine as much anymore, I could put it back in the box and keep it in my closet um, and have a little bit more space here, but I do just like keeping this machine out. Um, I don't know, it's like a sentimental machine to me and I do still use it sometimes. So for now that's kind of how this is set up. Um, and then in these drawers on the right side, I've got like my main kind of sewing tools and supplies, I guess. So I've got my little pin cushion, I've got all my bobbins, my measuring tapes. This is a loop turner and then this is just a chopstick, which is what I use to um, turn out corners. This was actually a little, um, I think it was like for acrylic nails or something like that, like a gel nail kit. Um, so it's got two sides and it's the perfect little case for storing things, like all these little notions. I've got my labels up here, just some random like pins and such. Um, this is a hand sewing needle. I just don't like keeping this in my pin cushion because I've done that before and it's just disappeared <laughs> um, into the pin cushion because there's no pin head on it. So I just keep it here. And then I've got um, some machine needles which just like look at how well those fit in there. I just can't believe that. And then on the other side I've got some tools which I use most frequently. So I have some Taylor's chalk. I have my sewing gauge. Um, this is my bodkin for threading through elastic. I have my stitch unpicker. Um, the cap for it keeps falling off. It broke and I tried to tape it so that it was still tight but it just keeps falling off. But it's fine. It still works. 
um, and then just a bias tape maker. So just kind of the handy things that I use um, most often. I just kind of keep them to the right hand side in this top drawer of my desk for easy access. In the second drawer I have more kind of like machine supplies and then some boxes back there. So these are all of like my sewing machine and serger accessories and kind of extra things. So like little cleaning brushes, screwdrivers, tweezers. There are some extra needles there as well that don't fit in my little box. Things like extra machine feet. These are some gears for when we fixed my Singer machine, um, the vintage one. And I think I showed you probably what the old gear looked like. So this is what the gear is supposed to look like, this white one. Um, it has all the threads and they, these kind of turn together to work the motor of your machine. Um, and this is what the old vintage one looked like. It was just completely shot. Like, I couldn't believe that the machine still worked as long as it did. So, yeah, anyway, that was just pretty crazy. So, I don't know why I've kept that one. It's just kind of fun to show, but I have some extra um, parts because we weren't sure which ones were going to fit. Um, so, I've just kept those there in case I need them. Um, then, in this third drawer, oh my goodness, <laughs> I've got all my stationery. Um, so this isn't super well organized, but um, maybe I just need like some drawer inserts or something to kind of put everything in its place, I guess, and keep it there. Then in this drawer, this is where I keep my patterns. So I actually have two of these drawers, one on the left side and one on the right side. And I have them all organized in some hanging folders with nice labels. So I'll have like the brand and then what the pattern is. They're all grouped by category. So these are pants. These ones over here are like coats and jackets. And then these are kind of like loungewear and sort of miscellaneous things. And then I've got some um, paper patterns in the back here as well. So, oh my gosh, I just can't tell you how <laughs> happy I am with this kind of storage. Um, for a long time, I was using like accordion folders to store my patterns, um, but as you can see, like some of them with the folded up, um, like printed and assembled paper, they're quite thick, and the accordion folders just were getting kind of out of control. So, um, yeah, that's the reason why I purchased these chests of drawers specifically was because I wanted the hanging file folder storage in the bottom um, specifically for patterns. Yeah, I think that this is a really good solution. Like everything's still folded up, um, but it's just very neat, very easy to see what I've got. And yeah, this is just very satisfying for me. It's big Virgo energy for sure. <laughs> and then I'll take you over to the left side and show you what's in these ones. So. Up here I've just got some other kind of random supplies. I've got my interfacing and then this is my tracing wheel and transfer paper, which is how I typically transfer markings from patterns to my fabric. Down here I've just got some more kind of random notions. I've got some fray glue, some like old buttons, none of them match. So this is kind of like a one-off button collection. Some safety pins, these are like hole punches. Just sort of random stuff which I may or may not need in the future. And then down here is actually all of my knitting supplies. So I've got all of my knitting needles and then those are all of my um, paper knitting patterns. Just because when I'm knitting, instead of looking at the pattern on a screen, I find it so much easier to print out the pattern and then be able to like highlight which size I'm doing so that I can highlight throughout the whole pattern, you know, all of the stitches and counts and everything. Um, and also just make little notes if I do make any changes or adjustments and have to do some math somewhere. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's just, I've got all of those just kind of folded in here. And then again in the very bottom in the hanging file storage, I've got the rest of my patterns. So these are blouses and tops, these are dresses, and then these are jumpsuits. So that's it for kind of my sewing desk um, workspace. If we turn this way, um, this is my cutting table. So this is also from Ikea and this is actually a kitchen island. 
And this is the same kitchen island that we used to have in our old apartment that I used to do all of my sewing and everything on. But now that it's in the middle of this room, it's more of just my cutting table and kind of like a workbench. So this is where I can like assemble all of my patterns, where I can do all of my fabric cutting, where I like pin everything together. And yeah, this is just so nice to have a separate work table than my sewing desk. It's usually not this clean to be honest most of the time when I have a project in process there's a bunch of stuff laid out here but I made it nice and clean for this video. I don't think that this specific kitchen island is available anymore um, but they do have similar ones. The one thing I will say is that the top that came with it, it's really nice. This is a solid wood top so that's a great feature the only thing is that it's slightly too narrow i would say um, a lot of times when i'm cutting fabric it goes like straight from this edge to that edge so it'd be nice to just have one that's a little bit larger but at the same time i'm not sure that it would fit in this room as well as this one does um, because you know i do have space on all four sides and I'm able to get around comfortably. So that's something that we might look at. It's very easy to switch out the top on this. Yeah, for now I think it's good the way it is. It did get nicked a little bit um, when we were moving. So this part actually kind of catches on fabric sometimes if I'm like pulling fabric across the table, but um, I guess I could just sand that down. So then I just have a little stool on this side if I want to sit here and put together my printed pattern and just do all of that taping or just sit and you know, do some hand sewing at this table or something, so that's really nice. And then around on this side, there's actually two stainless steel shelves, which I use for storage. Up here on the top shelf, I have some fabrics, as you can see, and these are more the fabrics for the projects that I'm currently working on and things that I kind of have, like, currently coming down my project pipeline. So those I just kind of keep out here for easy access. Over here, I have a stack of muslins and this is actually for patterns that I've created myself um, because I'm taking a pattern making course right now. So that's really fun um, and it's something that I'm working really hard at at the moment. Yeah, I'm hoping to one day eventually launch some of my own patterns. So that's very exciting and definitely stay tuned if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of my um, little stash of muslin upon muslin of testing different things that I've been going through at the moment. Um, and then down here on the bottom I've just got some pattern paper, so some like grid tracing paper, and then all of my like kind of longer rulers that I use. So I've just got a meter stick or a yardstick, um, a right angle ruler. This is a quilting ruler, so it's got the grid on it, um, and then a French curve. Over here on the side of the room by the window, there is this lovely ledge, which when we moved in and I saw that ledge, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to have a window seat. That's always been <laughs> something that I've really wanted for some reason. But in practice, I find that this ledge actually works as great, like, in process storage space. So I usually end up just tossing, like if I wanna get stuff off of this workbench and work on something else, or you know, I just need to put something to the side for a bit, it usually ends up there. And this is usually never this clean. <laughs> There's usually always stuff sitting on there. So I think for the moment, I'm not gonna do anything with this. Like I was thinking I could maybe make some chair pads so that I could sit there, but yeah, I think just practically, um, I need to keep this space more of a functional kind of midway storage area as opposed to something pretty um, to sit on, so. And then on this side of the room, I have my computer desk and more of like my workspace. So this desk is from FlexiSpot. I did feature this in a previous video um, and it's a standing desk. So right now it's in the seated position, but I can stand if I want to. And this desk is great. I absolutely love it. Um, I get so much use out of it and I think it's perfect for this space. This is just a little Ikea chair. It's just like a see-through plastic chair and I've just covered it with this faux sherpa or faux fur so that it's a little bit more comfortable. Then I have a little lamp here for some extra lighting at night. I've just got my extra monitor which 
is a huge help um, working on a little laptop screen. Sometimes when you're editing videos or something um, isn't as efficient, I guess, and having a bigger screen that's more like eye level is a lot more ergonomic as well. Then I just have my little agenda. This is just a moleskin annual agenda. I love these. I get one of these every single year. It keeps my life organized. Um, I've got my little mug of tea. Yeah, normally when I'm working or in here, I have some kind of hot or comforting drink, I guess. This is a little monitor stand from Ikea. So it's metal with a little bamboo drawer and this pulls out and I just keep kind of some computer odds and ends in here. Um, these are just some USB inserts and then my mouse and my headphones. So it's really nice when I'm not using them to just be able to put them away. Um, and also when I'm working on this desk and want a little bit more space here, like if I'm writing in a notebook or not using my computer, um, this can just like slide right underneath as well and go away and then I have a clear desk. So yeah, I really love this monitor stand. It just serves so many functions um, in terms of giving me some more space, having some more storage, and then raising my monitor to the correct height. And then over here, this is my little ladder bookshelf. And Jason actually made this for me, which I was so impressed by. He made the whole thing um, using a YouTube tutorial. So if that's something that you're interested in or just wanna see what the tutorial was, I will link that as well. Um, but I'm so happy with this. It's perfect for what I needed. It fits in perfectly beside my desk. And because it's a ladder shelf, the bottom shelves are thicker than the ones at the top. And it just works perfectly for all of the storage that I needed. So down there on the thickest shelf or the widest shelf, I have some storage boxes for some kind of tech stuff. Underneath, I've just stored some extra printer paper and a new printer, whatever it's called, the laser jet <laughs> thing. <laughs> Um, this is my printer, so this is what I print all of my patterns and such on, and that's basically the only purpose that it serves. I mean, aside from maybe printing a label here and there to ship something on Poshmark, but yeah, this printer is amazing. Um, it only prints one side and it only prints in black and white and it's a laser printer. It's lasted forever with the ink, I guess because it's a laser printer and not like an inkjet or um, whatever the term is, but it keeps telling me that it's low on toner and toner, that's the word, but it's actually like just still printing fine. So I have that extra toner down there for when it runs out, but it hasn't run out yet. And I've been using this printer for probably a year and a half or two years now. So if you're looking for just a simple printer to print some patterns out, then I would highly recommend this one. Then on the shelf above, I've got some books. So these are all of my pattern making books, which um, I'm using and learning with right now. I've got some notebooks, which I use for various purposes. This one is my sewing journal. So um, that's where I keep a record of all of the projects that I make, any like adjustments, changes, what I thought of the pattern. I'll usually put in like a little swatch of the fabric as well. Yeah, and then just some more notebooks for random things. These all have a purpose, I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just like various little notebooks. And then I just have my little pencil case here, which has all of my stationery that I use kind of more on on a regular basis. So this is just really easy to cart around with me. Um, it has all of the stuff that I typically use for writing in all of said notebooks. On this shelf, I've just got my backup drive. And then this is where I normally put this camera um, when I'm not using it. So you can see the little camera lens there. And then up there is kind of more of my like photography camera as well as a little plant. So yeah, I'm really thrilled with this shelf. Um, it has the perfect storage for me. Um, and I love that the wood tone of it as well, it kind of ties in with some other wood accents that are in the room, um, but it just kind of goes to like warm up the room a little bit because everything in here is either black or white or gray. Um, so this nice like kind of warm wood tone, I think just adds a really nice accent to the space overall. Coming back around to this side, I have my little ironing station. I usually just keep this out. I don't normally put the ironing board away. It's not really in the way here. I still have lots of room to get by on this side. So yeah, nothing really to say much about this area. The only thing that I might say is that like one day I wouldn't mind getting an upgraded ironing board. The only problem is that the foam pad on here feels like quite cushy, I guess. When I'm trying to press something like a really bulky seam, I feel like because the top of the ironing board is so soft, it sometimes doesn't get like the crispest press, if that makes sense. So I think maybe an ironing board or just an ironing pad on the top that has um, a little bit more like structure, it's a little bit more firm um, would be nice. But for now, this is totally great. Yeah, <laughs> previously when I was working out of 
our kitchen in our tiny apartment. Um, well, firstly, we didn't really have an ironing board, um, so I would have to press on the cutting table, <laughs> which was fine. I mean, it didn't really damage the top. This is pretty durable. But yeah, I think because I didn't have like a dedicated ironing space, I would just kind of skip the ironing steps sometimes, which now because I have this like fully dedicated ironing space, I don't do. I always press all of my seams and do what I'm supposed to. So <laughs> I think this has um, really helped elevate my makes and make sure that they're just all nicely pressed and looking professional. Okay, and then the last thing that I have to show you is my closet. So from the outside, it just looks like, you know, normal small closet. And then you open it, bam, it's ginormous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this was a great feature to have in this room because obviously having a little walk-in closet like this gives me so much extra storage space. So if you've been watching this video and wondering where I keep my fabric stash, this is it. <laughs> so I have these two cabinets here. These are both from Ikea and this is where I store mainly fabric. Um, maybe I'll turn on the light in here. That's a bit better. So I've just got it kind of stacked like this. Everything is all labeled, and yes, I have a lot of fabric in my stash that I need to go through. Um, I guess the thing that I find is that when it's kind of closed away in this closet, um, I don't really, like it's not super visible, and so it's very easy for me to like put it away in these shelves, which then looks very um, tidy, obviously. Um, but then I kind of forget what I have. So yeah, that's not great because I do have so much fabric that I need to go through. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking it might be nice to have like some open shelving, like some of those cube shelves. Because it is in a closet anyway, it's not really gonna look messy or out in the open if the closet door is closed. So I think just having something like that might work a little bit better for me and also like suit the space a little bit more because I can't actually fit both of these together side by side and then have space to hang things. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, for now, this totally works and is fine. And I actually did recently go through and um, make a catalog of all of my sewing stash in Excel. And I wrote out, you know, where I bought it from, what meterage or yardage I have, what projects I have planned for it. Because for the most part, I do have projects planned for all of these fabrics. I just haven't gotten around to making them yet. Yeah, I typically don't purchase fabric without a specific product project in mind. Um, if I'm buying fabric, I'm always purchasing the correct yardage or meterage for a pattern which I'm planning on making at some point. So yeah, my project queue is lined up until basically the end of fall at this point, and I also have some winter projects that I've got um, kind of mingling around in my brain. Um, so anyway, that's my fabric storage. Um, up here I've just got some like extra threads, which I don't normally use, some extra th serger things. Um, this is my lint roller. This comes in very handy as well. Um, this closet is a bit messy, so don't look in that corner. Um, again, this is more fabric storage. These are more like remnants. Um, and then this is all my knit fabric as well. Um, and then down here, I've got some more like office -y type things. So these are all of the old accordion folders where I used to store my patterns. Um, so I don't actually have a use for those anymore, so I might end up donating those. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. Um, this is a film camera which I got from my dad, which I'm planning on using. I just need to get some batteries for. And then just some random like books and tech stuff. Yeah, it's not super organized in here. I'd love to come in here and um, make this a little bit better, but for now it works. Up here, these are some things that I've actually got um, listed or will be listed on Poshmark. So this is kind of my little Poshmark corner. So that's just kind of where I've got all of that stored right now. I don't really have a better place for it at the moment. Over here hanging up, I've got some of my makes and also just a couple of Poshmark things in the back there as well. Um, so you might recognize some of these fabrics from my previous videos. Um, down here, I've got a stash of mostly like muslin fabric, but also some thrifted fabrics that I'm um, planning on using for upcoming videos. And then in this box is mostly thrifted fabrics and bed sheets and things, so I typically use those for things like muslins, um, especially now that I am taking a pattern making course. I've been making a ton of muslins and I just need a lot of fabric to test my patterns and test any changes and stuff like that. So. 
Um, that box came with us from our move and <laughs> has just kind of been there ever since. Um, in the back I have my cutting mat and then down there are just my boxes for my sewing machines and serger. And then up along the top here in these three baskets, I've got mainly like remnants and some just like scraps. I'm really bad at throwing out scrap fabrics. Uh, I just feel guilty anytime I do that. So I tend to hang on to them and kind of plan to use them for something in the future. Even if it's like the tini tiniest little scrap, I still <laughs> I can't let go of it. So that's why I have three full bins of like remnants and scrap fabric. I am going to try and find something to use those for. I recently dug through there and made some napkins from some linen scraps. So yeah, I will go through them eventually and hopefully get some use out of them, but that's just kind of where I keep them for now. And then up here is my knitting stash. So I've got a box of wool for an upcoming project. And then this is kind of like my um, just leftovers stash um, and you know some other yarns and things which are either leftover from previous projects or in the queue for future projects. So that's my little knitting corner. <sighs> I feel like I was just standing and talking for so long. Hopefully this video isn't like four hours long. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that is it for my sewing room tour and home office tour. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I really hope that it gave you some good tips, inspiration, ideas, everything for your own space. If you have any tips for me or want to share how you've organized some of your supplies, please do so in the comments below. I would love to hear your tips and, you know, yeah, we just love to know how you have your own space organized. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.